drives Chinese foreign policy. What are the forces? What is the, what, what is shaping Chinese foreign policy? Right? And making the point again about this complicated and challenging region in which China finds itself. Land borders with 14 different countries around China's border. Uh, maybe as many as half a dozen maritime neighbors, countries like Japan, uh, South Korea, uh, Malaysia, which are close proximity across the seas, but with which China doesn't have a land border. Complicated and difficult region. Uh, and of course, the US presence in East Asia. Xi Jinping is not describing quite how the world is today yet. So he's moving in the direction, goes back to this point here, moving away from a unipolar world where the US is dominant, one big superpower, to a world where there are many poles or many powers with substantial influence. And for China, that sounds more attractive, right? it sounds more fair more equitable balance of power on a global level. So moving towards uh, multi-polarity, right? so this is one of the uh, trends of Chinese foreign policy, right? working with developing countries. So one of the themes that the Chinese government promotes is the idea that China is a supporter of the developing world and it will be able to speak on behalf of those developing countries to give them more choice. In the middle of the last paragraph, China will remain a reliable friend and sincere partner with other developing countries. And then goes on to say, we will actively participate in multilateral affairs, supporting the United Nations, the G20, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the BRICS, and other multilateral organizations. They play an active role in international affairs work to make the international order and system more just and equitable, make it fairer. Right? So this is one of the, the objectives, one of the drivers and objectives of Chinese foreign policy that we see there. And, and, and as you said, and we've seen since 2012 several very practical, concrete things that the Chinese government has done to take that objective. So uh, references to peaceful development, not interfering in other countries, not seeking hegemony. So this goes back to the discussion we had uh, yesterday. I think China inevitably looked to try and challenge the US as number one. So if we read this, right, it sounds like there's a commitment then not to try and be number one, not to set up a new unipolar world with China at the top. Instead, this shift to a fairer, more, more multipolar, more equitable one. Right, okay, so does the, does the reality fit with the rhetoric, right? We're going to be more open, but then you go and try and hold on to your key you know, in, uh, when you're in, in China or around. So, is this really as open uh, as they say? It's right? talking about back in 2012, peaceful relations working together with other countries, but what we've read about over the last few years is the disputes in the South China Sea, the building on islands, and so some of the other things we identified yesterday. So again, does the reality really match up with, uh, with this record? Is this the real intention that things didn't work out in practice? Or is this not the real intention in the first place? Okay. Or has something else changed since 2012? That means China's foreign policy goals have shifted. Okay, right. So one explanation might be someone else did something, right? Chinese foreign policy has changed in response to some other development. Okay, it could be something another country did, or it could be some other change. Right? The Philippines uh, took a case to the International Tribunal under the Convention on the Law of the Sea. So China responds to that. That's one explanation. Did you see the Belt and Road in there? No, I don't think so, right? Yeah, so the, the Belt and Road, right? So some new idea, maybe because China had a leadership transition just as this document was being presented. So how do we interpret this sort of document? Uh, do we look at this as Hu Jintao's position and then Xi Jinping comes along with his views? Or do we interpret this as some sort of consensus among the party leadership? I 
I would tend to see this as a consensus view of the party leadership in November 2012.